Hi everyone, my name is Paola Cortez and I decided to do my research over the effects of teratogens during pregnancy. So to start off, what is a teratogen? A teratogen is any agent that can disturb the development of an embryo or fetus. Teratogens may cause a birth defect in the child or they may halt the pregnancy outright. With teratogens, there is a certain period when they are most dangerous. The time period is called a critical period, which actually falls within the first 2 to 12 weeks of development, or a mother's first trimester. This is when differentiation is occurring, and that basically means that this is when everything such as major organs and systems are developing. To start off, it all depends on what you are putting in your body. Some women will be affected by things that others will not be affected by at all. For example, you could drink your entire pregnancy and nothing happened to your baby, but other women can drink one beer or one glass of wine and have it cause a negative impact on their baby. Next, it depends on when. Some things are absolutely not safe during the first trimester, but after that, they have little to no effect on the baby. This is because by then, the part of the body that it could have affected is already done developing. Finally, it depends on how much. There are some things that are safe in small amounts, but if you go over the recommended dosage, it can have a negative impact on your baby as well. So, for my research, I decided to go over the most common teratogens for a pregnant woman. These include medications, disease, poor nutrition, stressors, and alcohol, drugs, or smoking. Of course, it, imp is it, it is important for me to remind everyone that almost anything can be a teratogen, so it is best to bring any questions you may have to your doctor. For the medications, I decided to cover some of the most common. The first one is aminopterin. It is used to treat cancerous tumors. What it does is that it blocks folic acid, which is crucial to the baby's development. It can cause anencephaly, hydrocephalus, or cleft palate and cleft lip. The next one is a blood thinner called warfarin, which causes central nervous system defects. It can also cause intellectual disabilities. Thalamide, which many of you may have heard of before, was widely used in the 1960s to treat morning sickness. It wasn't until later that it was discovered to cause babies to be born with only part or none of their limbs. Dizepam, which is used to treat anxiety, can cause cleft lip or palate. Angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE inhibitors are used in treating high blood pressure. They can cause fetal growth restriction and can also affect the baby's kidneys. The last one that I decided to go over are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or SSRIs and they are used to treat depression. These have been linked to heart defects, but depression itself may be more harmful to the baby than the drugs used to treat it. The pros and cons would have to be discussed with your doctor. The most common diseases that can act as teratogens include chickenpox and shingles, hepatitis B, C, D, and E, enteroviruses including poliovirus, AIDS, parvovirus, toxoplasmosis, Others such as Streptococcus, Listeria, Candida, Rubella, Cytomegalovirus, Herpes simplex virus, everything else that's sexually transmitted, and syphilis. The effects that these may have on a baby include jaundice, anemia, low birth weight, deafness, vision problems, stillbirth, intellectual disability, and heart defects. They may seem like a lot to remember, but if you just use the mnemonic device, cheap torches, they will be a lot easier to recall. Sometimes women forget that poor nutrition can act as a teratogen. Not getting enough folic acid, vitamins such as B12, and the right amount of calories a day can cause neural tube defects. An average woman needs about 1,800 calories per day during the first trimester, about 2,200 calories per day during the second trimester, and about 2,400 calories per day during the third trimester. This is just on average, and the right amount of calories for a woman will be decided between her and her doctor. Stress is a normal thing to experience, but it becomes dangerous when it goes to the extremes. When stressed, your body releases a hormone called cortisone. In high levels, this has been linked to premature birth, 
a lower birth weight, and developmental problems. Stress can also cause a woman to resort to bad stress-relieving habits such as drinking and smoking. The last topic I decided to go over is alcohol, drugs, and smoking. Drinking can cause fetal alcohol syndrome, which has mental and physical defects. Characteristics of fetal, fetal alcohol syndrome may include all or some of having a small head, facial defects, intellectual disabilities, heart defects, deformed limbs, below average growth, and ADHD. Smoking leads to lower oxygen levels for the baby, miscarriage or stillbirth, lung defects and SIDS, and there is no safe amount that a woman can smoke. Marijuana can cause premature birth, behavior or breathing problems, and poor or slow growth. Taking amphetamines has been linked to early placental separation, growth delays, and miscarriage. Opiates, which include heroin, can cause something known as neonatal abstinence syndrome. What happens is that a baby will basically go through the symptoms of withdrawal after being born. And the last drug that I covered is cocaine. This can lead to miscarriage, stillbirth, deformed limbs, SIDS, or brain damage. I want to thank everyone for watching my video, and I really hope you have learned something from it.